Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today we're going to cover the future bass style of music. Now, future bass came from the post dubstep area, er, area, <laughs> era, um, and it's one of those kind of UK based genres. So you know, music evolves so quickly. Future bass is probably going to be gone in like the next two months, and there's going to be another spawn of some other evolution mutant. But before we get there, let's just cover future bass. Um, it basically basically comes down to lush chords, some type of arpeggio, chord stabs where we bounce the chords. I'm going to show you the pattern for the bounce. Some really ridiculous melody elements, which we're probably not going to write out a complete melody, but we're going to give you an idea as to what would go into that melody. It's a lot of glides and a lot of things, and typically uh, you would play those by hand, but we're not, you know, the system's a little laggy for that. And lastly, we're going to do, uh, we're going to add percussion. Okay, so let's get into the tempo. So we're at around 140, 144. So I tapped out 144. Let's go to our browser. Let's go to busyworksbeats.com. Let's pull up a kick. And I'm going to go to X drums, pull up a kick. Okay, and now I'm going to draw out the pattern for the chords. So the chords are very um, stop and go type chords at certain times of the song. And that makes it kind of gospel-y, okay? If that's a word, more gospel-like. So it goes boom, 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 ch -ch 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 boom, dun, dun. Okay, so we're gonna get that pattern. So one, two, three, one, two, one, da, 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 one, two, three, one, two. Okay, that's how it works. Okay. So we have to draw this out so it keeps going. So it should be blank space. I don't know why it doesn't allow us to do whatever. So anyway, I'm gonna go to piano roll and draw this out for two bars. So that's the chord pattern, okay? So now we need to, so this genre also comes down to a lot of sound design, okay? So spending three hours trying to describe something would be a little too arduous, okay? So what we're gonna do here is just draw out a super saw, which is eight voices of a saw. Detune. This is probably going to be the most common sound you're going to hear is a super saw anyway. So let's do eight voices for each saw. So that's 16 voices of a saw. Let's turn our polyphony up to 16. You get a very lush chord. Now you want to pull in your stereo image so it's not so wide. So it feels a little bit tighter. All right. And uh, let's send the cutoff filter. Let's send the source to the velocity so we can control the cutoff filter with the velocity. And let's do cutoff A. So we're going to tell it to max out at that velocity when we first press the highest amount, highest velocity on the keyboard, and then low velocities are gonna play that low cutoff here. Okay, and add a little bit of resonance if you want. So now I'm gonna show you how to basically come up with chords. So you might be like, okay, which chords do we use? How do we create lush chords? The first thing we need to do is draw out a scale. So before we draw out the scale, let's just add that kick pattern to the playlist. All right, and let's go to pattern two. Let's right click, go to piano roll. Let's draw out a scale. A scale is just a sequence of notes which we like Okay, that's all it is. So let's go to, let's start at A. Okay, so that's the scale. Let me make sure this works. A little odd. Let me just stick with something regular. Let's do A natural. Let's do A natural minor just to keep it regular. And I'll show you how to transpose the scale later. I don't want to make this too confusing for people who are following along. So we're doing the A natural minor scale, which is all the white notes starting from A. And I did it in two octaves so we could see it easier. And I lowered the volume to zero so we can use those as a reference. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is go to snap to grid one half step. And I'm going to start at A, for example and build out a chord to match the rhythm we created with the kick. Now the important part here is to make sure the chords stop. Okay, so we wanna have these as what we call chord jabs or chord stabs, very short chords. So let's hit control up to transpose this up an octave. Let's add this into the playlist so we can hear it in context with the rhythm. Turn the metronome off. So before we draw out the chords, let's just draw out the rhythm for the chords. Okay, that's the rhythm. 
So we're going to have three chords per two bars, which is simple. So the first chord, let me leave those there. The first chord is going to be starting at A. All we have to do to make a chord is skip every other note within the scale. So skip B, go to C. Skip D, go to E. That creates the A minor chord. Now the chords we're going to be looking for are going to be the seventh, the ninth, and the eleventh chords. Those are very lush chords because they have so many notes going on at one time. So this is just a triad, a three note chord. Let's continue on the chord to make a seventh, which is adding, skipping F, go to G, that's a seventh. Skip A, go to B, that's a ninth chord. So let's try the ninth chord first, and if that's too much, we can pull it back later. So it's A, C, E, G, B, that's the ninth chord. And that's how we get that lush sound. Remember to keep the chord short. Now if we have a low velocity, it plays that low pass filter. We can have it build up over time. Okay, so let's just keep it at high velocity for now. And then over time, we can modulate the velocity. <clears throat> so let's copy the same chord. So I want the same chord in the second half. And then in the third chord, I wanted to go. Now I wanted to go to a, a, a note that's not within the scale. So this is a little more complex. But uh, what we're going to do here is just clone the chord. What we're listening to are the top notes. Okay, so we're listening to the B notes. So all I have to do is make sure this is relative to my thought process. So since the tone in my head is telling me that B, that that's the top note of the chord, I'm going to just copy that chord and move the whole chord so that the top note is then F sharp. Now this should work. Okay, and it does. So that's just a cool way to do it instead of thinking about changing keys and trying to figure out which key it's in. That's a quick way to do it because you can see here F sharp is not in this key. Okay, so now let's just make the saw pad a little bigger and a little cooler. Okay, let's hear it in. Okay, so let me think of a longer progression we could do. So you want to do those chord stabs for, you know, maybe four bars or eight bars. So that's going to repeat. And then you could do... Dun. And then we can do A, A, E. So all I'm going to do is just pull these chords down so that the top note matches the notes I'm listening to. So it's the same relative movement. A, A, E, B, B, F sharp. It's the same thing. Oh, I didn't change anything. Okay. Okay, so we need to hear it in context. That's a quick way to build chords if you're not familiar with building chords other elsewhere. Okay, so otherwise is the word I'm looking for. Getting really tongue twisted this week, probably because I'm thinking too much. Okay, anyway, let's go to silent. Let's up the release a little bit. So it doesn't just die out right away. Okay, so that's the bounce we're going to do. And we're going to do that for about, let's say, eight bars. So let's move the scale reference over. Let's just copy the whole chord progression, hitting shift, left click and drag. Now over time, I'm going to have the filter cutoff move. So I'm going to right click and drag it up. Okay, so it's going to start at a low pass filter sound and it's going to go up to an open filter. Now that's a little too low to start off. So we're going to extend it. And then at the end, I'm going to have it go. Da -da -ding. I know I can't sing. So it's going to go one, two, three. Okay, so we're going to build out this chord. Now, hopefully it's going to land on the note D. So it's going to be D, F, A, C. So this, again, a little complex. What I'm doing is strumming the chord and I'm adding another D note of an octave higher, but really it's the same chord. Okay, so it's just adding another tone. Okay, so that's a cool way to kind of end the chord progression. Now we're going to lead into longer chords using the same scale. So let's move the scale over again, using it as a reference. Now we are going to hold the notes instead of playing those short notes. We're going to hold the notes this time. 
Now I want to go. Dun. Now A should be the top note because this is what I'm listening to. And we're going to hold this time for one bar each. Let's just make it simple. So these chords are going to last one bar. Okay, so now we're going to reverse engineer. Okay, this is what we call pseudo leading tone and reverse engineering. It's the tone we hear in our head, which again is the top note in this case. We're going to assume it's the top note. We're going to work backwards through the scale to figure out the chord. So my mind is going to hear that note, and now I assume it's the top note of some chord. So now I'm going to work backwards, skipping every other note. So it's D, F, A, B, and then if we continue the scale, it's A, F, D, B, G. So that's the chord we're going for, G, B, D, F, A. So that's G major ninth. Okay, now you can get really cool. You can get pretty technical about your chord progression from this point on because you have an elongated chord progression. Okay. So let's say I want to hold the note A. This is another cool trick. And I'm going to move this main chord down to the next chord down, whatever that may be. So it's going to be the F chord, which is F major. So it's going to be F, A, C, E. But we're going to hold that A note. Okay, but let's go with the pattern of the kick. So I'm going to move this over. go dun. then we're gonna have two G's play same technique now let's see if this will work if we just clone these and move them so that G's the top note this may or may not work no it's not gonna work but so we have to do it manually using again the scale to figure out the chords so we just work backwards so we say skip F go to E skip D go to C skip uh, B go to A and skip G go to F F major chord F major ninth, and then we're going to go to the next one down from F major. It's going to be E minor ninth, so E, G, B, D, and then it's going to have G instead of F at the top. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. So again, we break it down in the Music Theory Essentials. I know I'm brushing over a lot of this stuff, but we really break it down into simple chunks in our full course package at busyworkspeeds.com slash music theory. Still going to keep those breaks in here. And remember, it comes down to a lot of sound design technique as well. So that's how they get those lush chords without deviating too far from the mood. So I'm going to pull down the detune. See if we can... That's how you get that sharper tone. Also going to pull in the stereo a little bit. I think that's. Then I'm going to go. Let's just copy that over again. All right. And then make one change to make it different from the rest of the chords. So you can see how much work just goes into the chord progression itself. Okay. For this one, I wanted to go dun. So I'm going to change the bass note to E. Then I'm going to go dun. There we go. So I'm just changing the bass notes. Okay, so that's the full chord progression. Now we're going to add a couple more effects to make it sound more in place. Let's go to the mixer. Under insert two is where the pad is. So let's add a fruity reverb. Now I'm not going to do the typical reverb where it just has a long tail. I like to have a very short reverb, but a lot of it. So a very short decay, a lot of reverb and a little pre delay. So it's kind of like a, it smacks you with an echo. It's really cool. But you want to time it so that it's in the rhythm of the song. It's kind of like slap delay.
So what I'm going to do is, since we didn't play these by hand, generally each note would have its own velocity, so they would be all over the place. So I'm going to simulate that by going to the strum tool in FL Studio, taking off any time movements, pull that back to zero, and changing the velocities. So some notes are going to be brighter than other notes, and that's going to make it sound more fluid. Easier way to do this is to key track your your cutoff. So that's another way you could do it as well. But what I didn't want to do is, you know, take away too much of the feeling with key tracking. So without doing that, I'm just going to make the chords rise up just like before. So now let's add the other elements. So we did the chords, the lush chords, and we did the chord stabs and the bounce. Now let's get into the, the note glides, etc. So note glides, you can think of it like a flute, the way you're gonna play, okay? So let's go here, reset the plugin. You could think of it, you could use the saw first. You could use mono legato mode and a little bit of portamento. So the notes glide. Now I'm not gonna spend you know hours on the melody because that'll take a long time to create a good melody. But I'm just gonna add a low pass filter and see what we can do with some piano roll. So before we get into that, actually, you wanna add more rhythm to the track. So let's open up busyworksbeats.com. Let's go to X drums. Let's pull up the hi-hats. Let's add a little bit of rhythm using some percussion and snares as well. Okay, so let's go to pattern three. And for the hi-hats, let me think of a pattern. So let's find a snare. That kind of has the tone. Okay, so let's boom. Okay, so that's the pattern. Boom, boom, one, two, three, boom. That's pretty simple. Boom. Okay. Okay. And add the snare. Now I'm going to have the percussion in the snare. Actually, let's do a different pattern. Pattern four. Since we're in double time, we're going to add the snare on the every other beat instead of every uh, two and four. We're going to go three and what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, wait, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the three and the seven instead of the two and the four like usual. Now to have that, chick chick, we have to have velocity control over the hi-hats. So let's go. Chick chick. So our mind is telling us hard, soft, hard. So we need to lower the velocity for that middle note. Chick chick. Okay, so let's add that in context in the second half. Actually, it works better for the first half. Okay, so let's add the melodic, something that moves around over time. Now I'm gonna try and record it via, you know, by hand, but there's a little lag, so it's gonna be a little messy. Now there's conflicts in this key because I'm not accounting for the F sharp that I want in the scale. So let me go back and, you know, let's clean this up because it's going to confuse a lot of people if I don't correct it now. So the scale reference, any notes that have F, I'm going to move them to F sharp. Okay, so I'm going to select Fs. And I'm actually going to leave the first chords 
out of it, okay? The second chords, any Fs are gonna be moved to F sharp. Now, if this doesn't sound good, we can always change it later, but let's hit Shift up to switch it to F sharp. Missed that one. Okay, so it doesn't sound good as a bass note, okay? So the key's changing over time, and this is gonna confuse people though. So sometimes F sounds good, sometimes F sharp sounds better. It's really weird how certain keys out of the um, scale will work. So notice it, it works best with the G major chord. Okay, so that's just how it's gonna work. So one octave works, the other octave doesn't. I don't know why, it's just how it is. Okay. Now we can add our melody runs. So I'm gonna try and record something cool. Some of those notes don't work, I understand. I was just testing out something. We're gonna do that in a lower octave. Actually, it doesn't even, let's just drop it down. Okay. Now we're going to add vibrato to the sound. So let's go to pitch A, turn it up to about 0.1, turn the gain up, you know, slightly, turn the rate to about free mode, first of all, free mode at five hertz around there. And we're gonna tell the LFO one gain to increase using a modulation envelope. Again, more advanced for more advanced users. Let's go to point one is gonna be the max for the gain. Actually, the gain's gonna be about 0.3 or so. We're gonna tell it to go up over time and then back down so that the vibrato comes in over time. Now, if I crank this up, you're gonna hear it. Okay, but I don't want it that harsh, so let's pull that down. There we go. Sticking up that lead a little bit. But... And we're gonna process the sound. All right, now let's create a cool bass, kind of bouncy bass. It's gonna be saw based. And let's do maybe four voices detuned at two octave, let's do one octave lower, low pass filter. Do a small decay time, 
little release to make it so it's not so computerized. Let's do filter cutoff movements under mod envelope. Let's turn it to a max value of that over that decay time. So we have a little movement there. Let's give it a little sub content with the sine wave. Let's pull in that stereo width. And let's add a little portamento. Slide mode so it automatically portamento slides. So now we're gonna add a bass line that just kind of emphasizes the movement of the track. So let me think of it, let me kind of beatbox the bass. So that's gonna be a little complex for this video. So we're gonna go. Let's just get the rhythm right. There we go. So that's the rhythm. Now we're going to send it to piano roll and give it some note values. So we're going to move that note up. So it goes CD. And I want to go. Dun, dun, dun. I can't sing, by the way. I say it almost every video. So we're going to go and lock this into a higher grid, maybe half beat. So it's going to be E. Then it's a dinner. So that's the baseline, very simple, but it's bouncy, okay? And to give the bass more attention, we're going to give it a stereo spread delay. So let's go to Fruity Stereo Enhancer for the uh, mixer track. And let's pull the phase offset to the right so that it starts on our left ear and bounces to the right ear over time. I kind of skipped the wood percussion because it didn't feel like it needed to be added, but you would go through and look for your wood percussion. So let's add that. So it's gonna go one clap, clap, clap. We're just gonna add that in. So it's kind of like the beats building up over time. Now you can go through and add tons of automation. I'm kind of skipping automation because it's a personal thing. You don't have to automate. Now we're going to create an arpeggio. So let's go to add silent one. And pretty much the work is done for you as far as the arpeggio. What we're going to do here is just copy the chord progression, but we're going to do something a little bit different. So let's hit control C to copy the chord progression. Go to a new pattern, pattern nine. Let's hit control V, paste it into the arp. Send that to track nine. And where are we at here? Let's hit control A in the piano roll. Hit alt plus L. That's going to drag out those notes. And let's hit control G. That's going to lock the notes together, which are similar. Okay. And this chord here is going to be a little segmented. So I'm going to manually drag these notes out. This might be a weird section. So it may need to be locked into the tempo. It may not. I'm not sure until we get there. So now the chords are just really elongated notes which is, is great. Now let's shorten this chord here to 16 bars. And now we're going to go into silent and create an arpeggio under arpeggio tab. And let's go to, we can do a three octave movement uh, arpeggio at a time of, let's say one sixteenth note. And let's go up the scale, up the notes that we have. Let's add this to the song.
It's funny how crazy good it sounds just as a regular saw. I never would imagine it would have sounded that great. Now the thing was, I didn't, the thing is we have it on polyphony three, which means it's only playing three of the notes. It's not playing all the notes. Now if I change the polyphony to 16 and I take it off retrig mode, let's hear it. Okay, so same tone pretty much, nothing changed. Let's try it with multiple voices. Now I like the one voice, but let's just try it with multiple voices. A little too wide and too much going on. So let's stick with one voice. Now we're gonna give it some reverb in the mixer. Okay, just a little bit. We don't wanna kinda of drown it out. We just wanna add a little bit. So now I'm going to play the song twice through just as a preview for those who are skipping ahead. I understand you don't, you might want to just see what happens at the end. All right. So here's a quick preview on YouTube to see what we created here in the future bass tutorial. I'm going to play it through twice and uh, we're going to wrap it up.
right? So that is the future based tutorial here at busyworksbeats.com. Be sure, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> Dot com. Anyway, be sure to like the video and please subscribe if you're new and please share with your friends because I think this is a power packed uh, tutorial for you here at YouTube. I'm getting tongue twisted this week. Anyway, these are just previews of what goes on in the premium section at busyworksbeats.com. So be sure to join for free at busyworksbeats.com for more exclusive videos. And if you want to learn more about music theory, you can check out the music theory essentials at busyworksbeats.com slash music theory. There we have more videos and more bonuses for you. So just click that link below. So thanks for watching today. It's busyworksbeats.com.